At last, I felt like an Anzac, and I expect there were 600 others like me. Captain Reg Saunders stated, after the Battle of Cap Yong, one of the most iconic battles of the Korean War. He had fought through the Second World War, but in this one action, fought on a lonely set of hills, many Australians, whose fathers had fought at Gallipoli, and many like Saunders, who had fought during the Second World War, finally felt worthy of the deeds of their forebears. Korea was a place that few Australians knew much about, but only five years after the end of the Second World War, Australia found itself committing its forces to yet another war. When North Korean troops invaded South Korea in June 1950, Australia responded as part of the United Nations multinational force to defend South Korea. Over the course of the war, 17,000 Australian Army, Navy and Air Force personnel would serve in South Korea's defence. Australian service personnel were involved in many early engagements during the advance into North Korea and were praised for their bravery and skill. They also took part in later battles such as Kap Yong and Meriang San. From January 1952, the front line became largely static and the war took on the feel of First World War trench warfare. Chinese forces launched one last offensive right before the armistice in July 1953, in which the Australians played their part in defending the UN front line. The end of the war came so suddenly that some soldiers on the front line had to be convinced that it really was over. The Korean War was one of the bloodiest wars of the 20th century, during which nearly 4 million Koreans and Chinese had died. Australian casualties numbered over 1,500, including 340 dead. Even after the armistice, the possibility of the war resuming remained high, and Australian forces remained in Korea until 1957. Meanwhile, the servicemen returning home were greeted by a public that were largely indifferent to their deeds and sacrifices.